with another DJ Porto Bears review. In front of me, you see two beers. That means it's too fizzy drinking time yet again. And what beer? Well, or no beers? We got two beers. No. Oh, what beer are we going to review? Well, I'm saying beer and beers because we got two of them, but they're both Newcastle Brown Ales, but they're different, but they're the same. How is that? Well, one of them has been brewed at Heineken in the Netherlands. This one right here, it says Holland. That's also the Netherlands, I guess. And the other one has been brewed in the U.S. of A. Yay, yay, where? At Lagunitas Brewing Company. They're making this in Petaluma and Chicago now. So, what about these beers is different. Well, they're both brown ales. They're both called Newcastle Brown Ale. They're both a year-round serving. Now, they both clock in at 4.7% ABV. Now, this is where they start to differ a little bit. The USA version is 28 IBUs, and the Holland version, or Netherlands version, is 17 IBUs. Now, ingredients-wise, what up with the original? The, well, at least the one they're brewing in Holland now. This beer has water, malted barley, glucose syrup, barley, I guess it's just, you know, roasted or just, you know, straight up barley, hops, and hop extract. They used to have Isinglass in this. They're not stating it now, but I know at one time they had Isinglass in it, and they used to put caramel color in it, but they stopped that, I think, around about 2015, something in that neck of the woods. Anywho, the reimagined version, as they're calling this on the interwebs of the USA brewed version at Lagunitas, is made with what? Water, malted barley, roasted malt, Centennial hops, and Chinook hops. So there's no glucose syrup, and there's no hot hop extract in it. And they have also used Lagunitas house ale yeast that they use on their pale ale and all those other beers. So definitely going to have some differences in here. And I've seen people saying, oh, this one sucks. No, it's better than the new one. Lots of shit going out there. The only way you really tell, because every one of those reviews I saw, they were drinking one or the other. Not together is to drink them side by side. So let's get into it. We'll start first about the appearance, and talking that is, of the original Newcastle Brown Out. It is caramel colored. That's it. There's no streaming bubbles coming up from the bottom. It had some head, as you saw in the um, pour video, that did not last. Maybe if I poured some more in the glass, it'll last next go. But this time, it did not last. So take a look at that brown caramel-colored liquid in the glass. That's it. That's what it's supposed to look like. Kind of like uh, maybe clover honey. So you know what? Let's dive in for that. Aroma! Caramel malt. Tons of caramel sweetness. Bready notes. Some earthy hops. A little bit of roast, mild roast. The roast that of burnt brown sugar or really dark caramel. A little roasty, toasty malt. That's it. That's all you expect. It smells like a Newcastle, same as it ever was. Quite sweet smelling to my palate and aroma. Anyway, let's dive in. Cheers! Okay. Thin and watery, as always. This is a back-to-back -back kind of crusher at 4.7%. At one time, this was super-duper popular. I think they used to sell like 7 million cases of this a year in the U.S. You notice I didn't. Now I think they're down to like 2 million. Anyways, that's probably why they're reimagining it. But you heard me say, uh, you know, some aromas and everything in there, but I didn't say skunk. The reason that is, this came from a closed 12-pack carrier where no light got to this bottle. I picked it that way on purpose to make it fair with the brown bottle. Flavor-wise, tastes like caramel with a little bit of roasted notes, toasty notes, um, burnt brown sugar, and some earthy hops. That's it. No hint, not hint of alcohol. It's an okay beer. It's not a mind blower. It's Newcastle Brown. It's what you expect it to taste like. And this is a kind of, kind of a classic that home brewers have, have made for Eon. So, now, let's talk about the appearance of the Lagunitas brewed version. It's a little bit darker. It's more of a burnt sort of garnet color. It's an in-between caramel, like a actual or like an extra dark caramel with some garnet notes coming through it. There's still a satellite of bubbles hanging around the edges of the glass here. Um, that's probably that's not a surprise. If since this is sounds like this one by the ingredients is all malt, more proteins in it, the head's gonna last longer. When I swirl it, we're not getting any alcohol legs either. 4.7%. I don't expect to see any. And there's some after bubbles coming up from the bottom. That probably looks super dark to you, but trust me, it's a caramel color with garnet glints. So, it's kind of pretty. Darker than this one. If you put them next to each other, you see here's the first one, here's that one. Definitely darker. Anywho, uh, I was digressing. You're not surprised. So let's dive in for that aroma. Get to it. Mm. Definitely got some hop on there, some, some piney notes. A little bit of citrus. Now, good bit of caramel coming. Now, what I'm saying, these piney notes, 
they're they're flat and muted. They're not big. They're there. Some herbaceous notes. Good caramel sweetness. Some roasty toasty notes. But definitely a bigger, more Americanized sort of hop presence. It smells like an old school kind of um, homebrewed version of a brown ale in a lot of ways. Tons of the ones that I've had. No alcohol on the aroma. Hell, let's dive in. Let's drink it. Cheers! Definitely has more hop presence to it. It's that traditional cascade, not me sure, centennial thing going on. Light piney earthiness in there as well. In the back end, tons of like burnt roasty notes. It's got more viscosity, definitely more body than the original Newcastle. Way less sweet. Very much like a lot of brown ales that I've had that my buddies have brewed at, at home in like homebrew you know shop or they've made and said, hey, taste my brown ale. Crisp, dry finish, not a hint of alcohol in the taste, just like the aroma. Um, super easy crushable. It's it's good. It's not a mind blower. Um, it's more to the American palate these days, I think, than this is. This is definitely a complete and total sweet bomb with some burnt roasty notes and earthiness to it. Mild, muted earthiness, albeit, but tons and tons of sweetness. The sweetness in this beer is way dialed back. And it had the bittering hops that are in there balancing that sweetness out more. And it's allowing also more, I think, the roasty notes that are in that malt. It's a darker beer. I think maybe they've used a you know a bit more roastier hops in this. I mean malts in this than this one. And that's how it's showing up. Let me take another taste of each one, one after another. Definitely sweet. Has that that twangy sort of aftertaste to it. That kind of like um cardboardy aftertaste that you get from Newcastle. I suspect maybe that's the glucose here because when you put sugars in the beers like that, uh, it dries them out pretty good. This side here, still a dry finish, but way less dry, tastier. Okay, um, we're going to say which one we like better first, then I'll give it a grade. I like the American version better, not because I'm a Lagunitas head and a Lagunitas fan. Um, I think this is a more modern take on the beer. I think that's why they've done it. It's way more, you know, inclined towards the American palate for sure. It's still crushable back-to-back, 4.7%. -back, you can get into them and not get beat down too fast on the alcohol content. A lot less sweet. But if you're a fan of the original Newcastle, you may not like this one because the big driving sweetness that's in this beer, if you're looking for that and that, like, earthiness, there's some earthiness in here, but this is definitely a redone version. Less sweet, um, a bit crisper. And definitely more hop forward, though it's not a gigantic hop monster or bitter beer by any stretch of the imagination. But um, I like this one a little bit better. This is, for my palate these days, a little too sweet. Not that I, I don't like it. I wouldn't drink it again or whatever. I would drink it again, but definitely I wouldn't seek it out. I would probably drink another one of these if I didn't want to have a too strong of a beer and I was looking for something malty. Because that's how this one plays off. So, let's grade it. At time of recording... <clears throat> Beer Advocate has new grade for the La Guarita brewed version, but for the Holland or Heineken brewed version, they give it 3.32 out of 5, so I guess that's like B- minus going into the B range. And on tap, of course, they do have a grade for the La Guarita brewed version here, the US of A, yay, yay. They are giving it 3.31 out of 5, so I'd say that's solid B range for those guys. And... The version from Holland, or the Heineken Netherlands brewed version, they're giving it 3.4 out of 5, about the same grade B also. Um, let me take one more taste here. I'm going to go B-, minus, like 81, 82, and I'm going to go B for this, 84. Solid beers. Not my cup of tea. I like more intense flavor and punch in the in the jaw. But you know what? They're out there in the beer world. I'm going to review it because someone likes this stuff, this kind of flavor profile way more than me. And I'm happy to review it and tell you what's what. So, have you had the Lagunita brewed version of Newcastle Brown Ale? Or the Holland or Netherlands version 
this brood, you know, there of Newcastle Brownell. If you hadn't, let me know what you know, because I like the quid pro quo and the back and forth. I also really like it when you think locally, drink locally, and support the craft beer movement. And it is exceedingly cool when you do me a great big favor and you rate, comment, subscribe, especially if it's your first time with us. And if you can get around to it, maybe consider, I don't know, I'm um, kind of smashing that like button that, along with crushing both of these and, and drinking something else later, is definitely going to put my big ass ah, kicking it and drinking beer. Happy face on. So the next EJ's Brew Tube, I got nothing but, uh, I guess, a bunch of Newcastle Brown Ale drink of love for you, either one version, and you know what's coming for you by now. That's right, a big ass peace out.